No, 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 no. The Infinity War begins. Hello world, it's Siraj, and a robotics company called Boston Dynamics released yet another incredible video demonstrating its flagship robot, the Atlas, doing parkour, and I'm going to explain the technical details of how it works in this video. This thing can now literally jump upstairs like a human in addition to being able to run in the forest without any tethers and perform a bunch of acrobatic balancing acts. This is so dope. We can use humanoid robots like Atlas to perform rescue operations in scenarios that would otherwise be deadly for humans like firefighting or bomb disposal. They could perform entertaining live shows involving wild stunts and maybe even someday act as a personal companion, performing chores for us humans and helping us out in various ways. If we read through the comments section though of these videos, every other comment is something about Terminator robots or some kind of military usage. Yes, DARPA did fund the development of this robot, but for performing search and rescue missions, not combat. And the United Nations has already begun important and promising discussions on what a proper set of regulations look like that prevents these robots from being used for homicide. Boston Dynamics began as a spin-off from MIT in 92 and thinks of its robot, the software, and the physical world as one holistic pipeline. Physical forces like the kinetic energy of motion and the force of gravity from the world cause the springs and gears of the robot to react in certain ways, and the robot responds to this. They also have this rapid experimentation mentality that I love. Build it, break it, fix it, which is why we see them kicking their robots a lot. So let's start off with the hardware of the latest version of Atlas. It's 1.5 meters tall and weighs 80 kilograms. It has 28 degrees of freedom throughout its body. Each degree of freedom is a different kind of motion the robot can make along an axis, say its elbow or knee. Think of them like the robotic analog to joints. To power all of these joints, the Atlas robot uses a hydraulic power unit with high pressure oil. Hydraulic systems convert mechanical energy into hydraulic energy. When a hydraulic pump operates, it performs two functions. First, its mechanical action creates a vacuum at the inlet of the pump, which allows atmospheric pressure to force liquid from the reservoir into the inlet of the pump. Next, its mechanical action delivers this liquid to the pump outlet and forces it into the hydraulic system. Besides robotics, they're also used in a wide range of applications from factory machinery to giant Japanese mech robots. Basically, anytime an application requires heavy and systematic lifting, a repeated use of powerful and directional force. BD's hydraulic system can run for about half an hour up to a full hour without needing to be tethered to a power source. It consists mainly of a motor, a reservoir, and a hydraulic pump. The system can generate a tremendous amount of power and is based on Pascal's law of physics drawing its power from ratios of area and pressure. The major difference between Atlas and the vast majority of other humanoid robots is that it's not powered by electric motors, but by these hydraulic actuators driven by a battery-powered electric pump. Even though hydraulic actuation is more complex to set up, it gives them way more power than electric motors and more compliance to absorb shocks, which is crucial to perform highly dynamic motions. Atlas also uses a LiDAR to create a 3D map of its environment. This is an imaging system that makes sense of an environment by bouncing lasers off of it, then analyzing how they reflect back. It's a precise rangefinder that operates in 3D space. Additionally, it uses some stereo proximity cameras for situational awareness, each pointed in different directions, so don't try to surprise it. All of these components are controlled by its onboard real-time control computer and cooled by the onboard thermal management system. One more thing to note here is that a lot of the parts were 3D printed because it's fast and efficient. DARPA funded a robotics challenge for a couple of years, and the Atlas robot was given to test to different academic teams. The goal was to get a robot to perform eight tasks in different tracks, including driving a vehicle and climbing a ladder. It was a very difficult challenge and resulted in a lot of hilarious robot fail videos for us to watch on YouTube. The dozens of teams that 
all had Atlas robots, could spend as much time as they wanted taking them apart and reverse engineering the hardware. Despite this freedom, none of them achieved performance anywhere near what Boston Dynamics was doing even before the challenge started. Do you know what that means? No? It means the value of Boston Dynamics is almost entirely in their closed source control software. What sort of algorithm could they possibly be using that's giving them such amazing results? The first thing that comes to mind is deep reinforcement learning. In fact, both Google and OpenAI have used DeepRL to enable robots to manipulate physical objects with unprecedented dexterity. Luckily for us, BD's CEO recently had a Q&A session at MIT where he was asked this question. Let's hear what he had to say. I'm sure we will use learning before too long. Uh, I'm not sure whether it'll be deep reinforcement learning or something else. But mostly we're interested in optimizing the complicated uh, state space partitioning we do. No deep RL so far. In fact, they're not using any machine learning technology on that robot. Incredibly, you heard the man. So what are they using? They're likely using a stack of very carefully hand-designed classic control laws. Classical control theory provides us with strong mathematical guarantees of stability and performance without requiring a learning process. It works out of the box, if we've designed our control system properly. But the scope of its abilities are limited. Control algorithms have to be designed specifically to perform a range of tasks. If we change the task, we need to redesign the control laws. We can see on the web that Boston Dynamics developed a simulated Atlas software package for the popular Gazebo robotics simulation environment. This acts as a high-level controller that lets developers make a set of joints follow a desired trajectory specified as joint angles. And it's a part of ROS, the robot operating system, which Atlas's physical version probably uses as well. ROS is a collection of software libraries aimed at simplifying the task of creating robot behavior. It allows us to create a control system where individual robotic components are defined as nodes and can communicate data between each other at the protocol level. Framing our system this way is also beneficial for enabling concurrent movement across the distributed set of components on the robot, like moving an arm while moving a leg. If we know what the hardware components are and we can use ROS to create a control system that encapsulates each component, then comes the question of the control algorithm to use on this system. Like the CEO said, an end-to-end -end approach is not used, but instead several control algorithms, each suited for different tasks, probably are. The one they're using for walking looks pretty sick. And a similar humanoid robot, Honda's Osimo, a delightful human-sized Lego piece, open source its walking algorithm called Zero Moment Point. So let's start with that. Moment refers to a moment of inertia. It's a tensor. The amount of torque needed to cause any given angular acceleration is proportional to the moment of inertia of a body. Since robots have two points of contact with the floor, their feet, and they're supposed to walk, run, or jump, their motion needs to be planned in regard to the dynamical stability of their whole body. All the positions, velocities, and joint angles need to be taken into account. This is non-trivial, especially because the torso of the robot has a larger mass and inertia than the legs, which are supposed to support and move the robot. It's like the problem of balancing an inverted pendulum. It's heavier up top than below. The trajectory of a walking robot is planned using the angular momentum equation to ensure that the generated joint trajectories allow for dynamical postural stability. And this is quantified by the distance of the zero moment point in the boundaries of a predefined stability region. The position of the ZMP is affected by the referred mass and inertia of the robot's torso, since its motions generally require large ankle torques to maintain stability. ZMP accounts for the inertia of the robot and can tell when it's about to fall. It's dynamically stable. If we paused it in the middle of a step, it could fall. 
It works by calculating the zero point moment, which is the spot at which all your inertia is canceled out by the angle at which you catch yourself. It's like sticking your foot out to catch a fall. That's what the robot is doing. ZMP is still inefficient. It requires very large ankle torques because it's in a near constant state of fall. If we walk slowly with a 20 degree bend at our knees, keeping our feet as flat as possible, we can simulate what it's like. Basically, the ankles are responsible for pushing the robot up. But they probably aren't using ZMP, at least anymore. They've got to be using a combination of more dynamical control strategies. There's actually been a lot of work in this space. Capture point control, model predictive control, quadratic programming, direct inverse dynamical optimization. All of these strategies are worthy of a full course in robotics. It's too much to fit into one video, and that's not even including any machine learning, which is exciting. There are three things to remember. Boston Dynamics is powered using a very efficient hydraulic power unit, which converts mechanical energy into hydraulic energy. The zero moment point algorithm is used to help bipedal robots walk, run, and jump by computing a stabilized trajectory for the robot. And Boston Dynamics likely uses a stack of different dynamical control algorithms to help its robot perform motions. What was your first reaction when you saw Atlas do parkour? Let me know in the comments section and hit subscribe if you want to see more educational videos. For now, I've got to run, literally, so thanks for watching.